Hi guys, welcome to today's painting. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me today. In this video, it is a full length and it can be found on my Patreon page and my Paint with Lovejoy page. So you're going to get real time narration and step by step guidance with this. If you would like to further support Paint with Lovejoy, please check out the various outlets. And for more in-depth courses, please check out Paint with Lovejoy. As always, share this with your community. All right, guys, it's another fun painting today. Max from Where the Wild Things Are on his boat. So grab your supplies, transfer your traceable to your surface, and as always, make sure you take your progress photos. Now on this one, this is the full length version for this painting, and we're going to work on some blending after we put some of our base colors down. So you're going to get some good practice, and you are more than welcome to switch out colors and kind of make this more of your own uh, painting. Since I'm on a smaller canvas, I'm using a medium flat brush, but feel free to switch brushes relative to the size that you are painting on. And we're gonna be going with yellow and white, about a one-to-one -one ratio, but if yours is a little lighter or darker than mine, totally okay. And in today's painting, we are using primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. So we're going to be filling in the sails with this light yellow color, and I am going right over those traceable lines. On mine, I did draw over it with a Sharpie marker for those of you at home that are going to pause the video and draw what you see. Um, again, more than welcome to switch out colors if you need something to match your house, or maybe you're painting this for somebody and you want to put their favorite colors in there, by all means, um, switch out the colors and make the sail and the boat um, to the colors that you want. So again, we're filling in this space. I am painting um, on watercolor paper, so this does dry a little bit quicker. And depending on the tools and the supplies that you have, feel free to adjust your method. If you have fast drying paint, um, if you're painting on paper like me, or if you're painting on canvas, adjust what you need. So now we're gonna take just a tiny, tiny amount of red. You can see where I put it on the plate and we're mixing it with that yellow and white mixture. And I'm gonna place this in a few areas and then I'm gonna wipe off my brush and go back and blend this new color into that base yellow and white mixture. And this is getting you kind of comfortable with smaller brush strokes and with blending. This is called wet on wet blending. Please take your time in this. Uh, pause the video as much as you need to. This is not a race and um, I want you to kind of enjoy the process. So if this takes you a couple of sessions, that's okay. It's more important that you're actually painting rather than getting this done in a half hour or in an hour. Take your time. Now, as we're doing the blending, if you need to, you can go back to that original yellow and white mixture to do some blending that kind of rehydrates uh, the paint and just kind of go back and forth. You're gonna find your uh, groove with your blending. And you saw there, pause the video, take a progress photo. Now we're moving into the boat. Um, and again, using the primary colors, but you can switch this out if you want a blue boat or a purple or a different color. I'm just going to be filling in the space with red, and then we are going to do a little bit of a mixture of red and black for some of the shading for the shadows, kind of like we did in the sails. If you need to, you are more than welcome to switch down to that pointy brush. Uh, sometimes you get a little better control. It's got a smaller tip to get into some more detail areas, and feel free to just kind of go back and forth. Uh, you only know how to use your tools when you use them and practice with them. So again, try different brushes, try different techniques. All right, so here we're going to take a tiny amount of black and mix it with the red. It does go pretty dark pretty quickly. And just like in the sails, we're going to place this in a few areas. I'm going to wipe off my brush and then go back with light pressure and blend this into the base color. You can clean your brush entirely if you want. And then here I grab just a bit more red to kind of help rehydrate and even tone down that really dark um, color, the red-black mixture that we put on there. 
Please take a big inhale, relax. Remember to breathe as you go through the painting process. This is more just for fun. And it's a nice way to just kind of, you know, vacate or escape your current world, your current work or family or anything. And this is just time for you to create and relax. So take a progress photo. We're going to be moving down to the pointy brush, a little bit more detail. And I'm going to make an orange. So we're starting with that red or the yellow, start with the yellow and then add a tiny amount of red to make the shade of orange that you like. And it does not have to match with mine. If you have a tube of orange, you're more than welcome to use that color directly. And here we're gonna take a little bit of red and just kind of add some shadows elements into this little flag on the top of the boat. And again, wiped that brush off after I placed a little bit of red and then just with light pressure going back and softening the lines. Here I'm taking some direct yellow, putting it kind of on the left side of the flag, just again to give kind of a few different values and shades. Um, do this to your liking. All right, so now pause that video, take a progress photo. We're gonna be moving into blue paint and we're going for a medium blue. And I recommend starting with the white and adding the blue um, to get to the shade of the blue that you like. And we're going to be filling in the water and then we'll go in with a little bit darker blue, um, just working our way along. And I do like that this one showcases the primary colors very nicely with our red, yellow, and blue. And for the water, I am going right over those traceable lines. Um, we'll reapply them with our black um, in the next few steps, but just paint right over it. You don't have to fill in the entire space. This is a bit more of kind of an illustrative uh, painting. But if you feel like filling in the entire bottom portion of the canvas with the blue and then maybe a lighter blue for the sky or maybe some sunset colors for the sky, go right ahead and personalize this painting to your liking. I'm proud of you for painting at home. I'm proud of you for painting wherever you're at. So here we're grabbing the darker blue, that direct blue, and kind of going back almost to where those traceable lines are, but doing these little water movements. And this just kind of gives the indication that we have some movement happening here. It's giving us a darker color on top of that medium blue. Um, and it's just kind of fun. And going back to that old school method of just, you know, making the little pointed squiggly lines to indicate that we've got the water moving. So another spot to pause that video, take a progress photo. And now we're going to start with white and add a tiny amount of red. Very, very light amount. And this is going to be for the skin on Max. You can add a touch of red or yellow to warm it up. If you want to go with a um, darker, more tan skin tone, feel free to use raw sienna. If you want to go a little bit darker, you can use some burnt sienna. You can mix some other shades in there, but you can make the skin tone any color, any shade that you want for your painting. So just kind of place that on the, the face of Max. And then now I'm grabbing that direct white. We're going to fill in the pajamas and we're placing the white on there directly. Then we're going to make a light gray, place it on there for some shadow values, wipe off the brush and then go back and blend. So after today's painting, you should be a little bit more comfortable with your blending and with your smaller mark making. You're doing a great job. As you get into some of these smaller spaces, if you do find that you're shaky, exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas. So here we're making our light gray and that was white with a little bit of black. We're kind of putting it um, where the shadow elements would be. Feel free to pause the video, take a screenshot and zoom in a little bit closer if it's hard for you to see where I'm placing these colors. Then we're gonna wipe off that brush, clean it off. And with just um, a fairly dry brush, um, just a little bit of moisture on the bristles, we're going back and softening this gray into that white base paint. Again, remember to breathe. You're doing a great job. Um, and again, I'm proud of you for painting. All right, so now we're gonna take a little bit of light yellow with a tiny amount of black. We're going for kind of a grayish yellow and we're gonna put a shadow behind Max, um, behind the figure here, behind our character. So it's kind of like a dirty yellow, a little bit of black goes a long way. 
And again, this is almost as if um, our character here is casting a shadow on the back of the sailboat. So we're going from that left hand side, again, just kind of placing it on there. You can pause the video and take that screenshot and zoom in. And then we'll wipe off that brush and then kind of soften that line a little bit. Does not have to be perfect, but it is almost like a cast shadow behind our character. If you need to go a touch darker like I'm doing here, trust your instincts. If you feel like you don't need to go a little bit darker, you can skip this step. But I'm just making it a little bit darker, a little closer to right behind our character. And then wiping that brush off and just a little bit of moisture on the brush. Uh, going back and softening that line. All right, now we're going to use a little bit of red and black. Going to intensify the shadow on the boat a little bit more. Still using that pointy brush and just observe the little places that we are putting this. If you're inclined to put some shadow or highlight elements somewhere I do not, trust your instincts and by all means, go right ahead and do that. So pause the video. I want you to fully let this dry before you move into this final step. And this is going to be the black outlines. Um, you do want your painting fully dry. You can use your pointy brush and black paint, or I'm using an India ink brush pen. There will be a link in the description box in my supplies um, for where you can purchase this. And it's a not too expensive. I think it's like five, four to six bucks for this. You can order on Amazon or get at the get at Michael's. Um, but I like this. It does work just like a brush, but it's holding the ink, the pigment in the body of the pen. So I don't have to keep going back and grabbing paint. So whichever option that you are using, I want you to breathe. Um, we're going for a little bit thicker lines here and play with the pressure of your brush. Light pressure is going to create a smaller line. A little bit more pressure is going to create a bit wider line. And I am keeping kind of medium pressure as I do this. And this is just good practice for your eye hand coordination. Um, remembering to breathe, kind of keeping it steady. This is something that gets better and more comfortable with practice. If you need to, you are more than welcome to rotate the canvas, turn it around sideways, whatever is going to make your process a little bit easier. I keep mine in kind of the same orientation just because I am filming the video. All right, but doing good. And we're going through basically going over all those original traceable lines. So you can either follow along with what I'm doing here or look at that traceable um, from the beginning of the video. And we're just going back over all those lines. I have had some people start switching out colors and not using black. I had somebody do white. Somebody else uh, sent me a photo and they did yellow. So feel free if you are inclined to switch out the color even for this. Go right ahead and do that. It makes it even more fun and unique and even a bit more pop art vibe. It's also okay if you need to break up your painting sessions into a couple of sessions. You don't have to complete this painting all in one sitting. If you only have a half hour to paint, paint for that half hour, make sure you pick it back up again for your next session and continue the process. It's more important that you find regular outlets to be creative rather than being perfect or getting your painting done in 30 minutes or an hour or in one session. So again, take your time, go at your pace. That's the beauty of painting at home and utilizing a video. So as soon as my hand moves away, you'll see the details on our character here. Again, pause the video, take a screenshot, zoom in to get a closer look as needed. Remember to breathe. You're doing great. So your call for the water, how much of the water you want to outline or put in those marks again. Um, you could even go back to the water and do a little bit of uh, white lines with this exact same type of design and give some more highlights on the water. You can put some birds in the sky. Um, you can write somebody's name on this. Please personalize it and make it unique to what you want for your painting. I'm really proud of you for painting today. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to get creative. Please don't wait too long till the next one. And until then, cheers.